Hello everyone and welcome down to the beautiful Grove where we're going to be doing a one club challenge. I'll be introducing you to my weapon of choice very shortly but we're going to be playing nine holes off the backs here. It's going to be a very tough challenge. I've just hit my tee shot off the first and I've not left myself in an amazing position. So the club I'm using is the P790. It's a 17 degree driving iron and from what I understand over the last day of practicing with this it's an absolute monster however this monster has left me in a particularly monstrous situation here on the 10th hole it's a dog leg from right to left the pins down there i'm not even going to bother zapping it because there's no point my <laughs> my predicament here is it's a one club challenge with a 17 degree driving iron and this green surrounded by bunkers so uh, <laughs> i don't i don't know i'm very tempted to go for the gap on the right no i've got to go through the middle got to go through the middle Oh, I actually struck that okay, but it went so low. That might be one of the bunkers. This may be the shortest uh, or longest one club challenge I've ever done. <laughs> so this is probably the worst nightmare uh, I could have had on the first. I'm in the bunker by side of the green. And this is one thing what I love about one club challenges. It forces you to adapt and use your imagination, something which a lot of people don't do in their practice. This is going to take <laughs> a lot of imagination. Um, I basically have to open up my body to point massively left to the target, open up the club face as much as I can, get as low as I can, and literally just try and chop underneath the ball to just try and get it up and out. I'm saying that like I know what I'm doing, but I've got to be honest, I can't remember the last time I tried to play this shot, so this could be interesting. I need someone like John Rahm here, he can play this really well. So what you've got to do is you've just got to use the bank. So what I did here is I controlled it like with this thick rough here. Hey, listen, it's just, it's just the way I envisaged it. It's the way I imagined it. Basically a course management, God. I'm gonna put my hand slightly ahead so it's got very little loft on there. Just try and stroke it. It looks like it's gonna be slightly right to left when it gets on the green, but nothing crazy. Wow, all right. Looks like I found my, uh, my new chipping club. A bogey on that hole after being in the bunker is not the worst thing in the world. Take it. So that was a almost a toe shank uh, with the two iron. However, it's actually ended up all right. Clipped the trees right side of the fairway. 320 yards left in, par five. So I'm just gonna chip it almost just straight down the middle of the fairway hopefully leave myself about 200 yards in which i don't think i've ever said on a par five before yeah that should do me nicely so we're here for three shots and not in a terrible light it's sat up a little bit i'm a lot better than if it would have drifted down onto the path and again it's just a i've just got to get some elevation chip it onto this fringe and then let it feed down it's just so springy this club it just takes off when you strike it. it makes these shots a little bit more difficult like that oh john i'm sorry you got the gopro there for a lovely shot and i've just steamed it past chances oh 462 yards Whew. i've really not made it easy going off the backs however again distance is not the issue i need to leave myself longer into the holes so left half of the fairway here is better than the right oh no that's right semi but i'm gonna have a blind second shot oh pete come on broke a tee as well 100 and that's a complete lie it's 206 yards um straight pretty much downhill i can just see the top of the pin and the green it's got an opening to the front so i can hit it a little bit lower i've not really got this on the line any of the lines i've really intended so far it's a little bit early in the morning i'll give myself a break ball of number feet should move it a little bit right to left nice three quarter swing yeah Oh, that is absolutely down it. I don't know, I can't see the bounce, but it looked good. Maybe just moving slightly right, but 
up the slope, more like a pup. It's going to break a little bit left to right. I'm not going to think about it too much. I'm just going to move into the side. Uh, I've got my little point that I'm going to pick. I'm going to run it up the slope, a little bit left to right, straight down that flag line with the shadow. Oh, I pushed it. My God. It's almost like a slice from this far away. <laughs> I'm really sorry, John. I know you're trying with this GoPro. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not... <laughs> Just not getting anywhere bloody near. <laughs> Was this a good idea, this video? 230 yards to the pin from here, which is probably a little bit more in the wheelhouse of this club, but severely downhill and the green is very much tilted from front to back so i need to get a little bit more elevation on this we're going to put a high cut hopefully oh. right um i've got to be honest i'm kind of happy with that tee shot uh, but at the same time i'm a little bit annoyed because it was bang on line and it's actually got backspin Somehow, I'm not sure. But it actually gives me my first probably genuine birdie attempt. And I can't actually see it doing much. It just looks straight, straight down to the hole. So 400 yards almost off this back tee and it is time for the stinger. It is slightly back into wind, which basically means it's an excuse to hit a stinger. So that's what we're going to do. Now, the way I play a stinger is ball position is a little bit further back than usual. So with a 17 degree two iron, that's kind of almost on the left heel normally if you want to hit a normal launching shot. But for this particular shot, I'm going to put the ball back in the stance. So it's just forward of center of my stance. And that's going to be a little bit more of a descending blow onto the ball. Now, as I get descending, onto the ball my club is going to move slightly more out to the right hand side so i'm going to aim a little bit further to the left and then i'm just going to put a little bit of weight forward so about 60 percent forward onto my left side and just try and absolutely drill it keeping my weight left a little bit like that remind me next time i'm in a competition just remind me to talk through every single shot. I look like a complete nutter, but focus is the mind. No one's gonna ever wanna play with me. <laughs> Nobody wants to play with me. So the specs in this club, I've got a smoke shaft in there, it's a 6.0, so it's an X stiff rather than a, an XX stiff. And I have to say, it feels pretty good. I've not actually liked smoke shafts that much, um, hazardous ones in all the clubs that I've tried, but in this, actually, yeah, pretty steady. The actual club head design, it's very similar to the last P790. It's just got a better top line. It looks very straight behind the ball and it's a little bit more compact. It feels better. There's no doubt about that and it sounds better. And sound is, it's an interesting one because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what it sounds like, it's what it performs like. But the acoustics that you get off a club, it can make you feel a little bit more confident when hitting it. It can certainly give you a little bit more of an emotional attachment to a club in many respects. And this sounds just, John kind of pointed something out amazing before. It just basically, it sounds like a persimmon club. It sounds like you're hitting a wooden club. It's a thwack when you strike it, which is great. And I don't know what I'm going to do because the pins at the front, it's got a big bank at the front of the green and it throws the ball off to the right. I'm going to have to try and run it through that to try and get to the pin. Two parts in a row though, recently. Recently, last two holes. <laughs> that is recently though. It's, it is very recently, isn't it? Right, come on. Oh no, that's too far right. 
Ah, yeah, that slope has just completely thrown it. Back of the green, eh? Yeah, back of the green. Right, par three, par five, par four finish. I want one birdie. Come on. Ah, the dying embers of summer, John. Last gasps before the autumn properly sets in. Oh, it's sliding, but not enough. Kick right. Oh, there's like a little hollow to the left of that green. And I think it's just gone into it. It might have clung onto the left edge, but. isn't ideal. Uh, third shot on the par five, ran all the way through. And I'm in the back bunker, downhill lie, um, and I'm pitching up onto the green, and then it's kind of up a slope and then down to the pin. I just, again, this is, yeah, tough. So massively wide stance, massively open club face. I'm gonna try and get into that sand a little bit more this time. I didn't manage to do that the last time I had this bunker shot. So come on, into the sand. Well, you might have overheated, please. You think? <laughs> you think I maybe give that a little bit too much? Wow. <laughs> oh, man. Beast, mate. Wow. Just when I thought I'd have that buddy birdie. And the walk of shame. One side of green to the other. Off the other side. <laughs> Down the slope. It's a good job it's early in the morning, there's no one here. So we've got another chip and run, right, okay. That's a much better pace. It's just a bit of a wide, of a wide. Right, this for a bogey. I'm not any, not any doubles yet. I'm actually only to this point two over through eight holes, which is pretty awesome actually. Well, through seven holes. If a hole this is three. <sighs> last hole, last chance for a birdie. The last hurrah before an injection of caffeine, which my body desperately needs. And it is a toughie. It's like 440 yards, I think, off the back. And I need to get this, obviously 240 off the tee, give myself, obviously, about 200 in. It's a tough approach. This isn't the easiest birdie hole, but I've got this. Oh, that is a push. That is not a draw. Sit. Yeah, it's all right. It's in the right. It's actually probably not bad. It's in the right hand kind of rough, but the rough's not too thick here. It gives me a longer approach, which again, is not a bad thing. <sighs> Come on, John. Come on, John. Uh, you really do have to sing something that I hum a lot. <laughs> 250 yards and it's a little bit into wind off the right, which is probably why that kind of held up probably more than I expected it to. And this has just got a, just got a way, a good shot here, mate. It's just straight at the pin, 250. I'm on a slight down slide, so it's gonna help me shoot it forward. Come on, one last good swing here. Oh, I've hit that so well, but it's left. Yeah, front left of the, well, front left Dip. off the green. Yeah, that breeze is definitely freshening. It's quite a little bit into now, and I've left myself with a horrendous chip and run. Um, I've got a huge bank here. I've got to kind of scoot it around and up to the left off that, and there's another bank before the green, and then the pins kind of at the front section. Oh, it's just not enough. Ah! Oh, there's a dagger in there. Oh. It's actually got a chance as well. Walk off, walk off. Oh, no. <laughs> it's quite a few of the guys uh, kind of who work here, kind of follow the channel. I just saw a few of them at the corner of my eye watching them. That would have been it. That would have been it. I could have retired. But I thought he really is that good. Yeah. Ah, well. 
That wasn't too bad in the end. So that's going to be two, three, four, five over. And considering I was only a couple over two holes ago, it's not bad, just a bit of a limping finish. But I really enjoy this type of stuff. And if you do get the chance, I always recommend at least playing a few rounds if possible with three or four clubs. You don't have to do a one club challenge. That's obviously playing the ridiculous. Um, but three or four clubs, it helps you adapt. It helps you think about different shots. And using your imagination and engaging those parts of the brain is going to do you much more good long term. Just kind of going to a driving range and just hitting the same shot over and over again that doesn't engage the creative parts of your brain. This does. Unfortunately, I just wasn't as creative as I needed to be. But I just want to say massive thank you to the Grove for having me down as well. Uh, I didn't really need to show that to you. You already know where I am. But the course here is actually looking in great condition. Every time I've been back in the last few years, it just seems to get better and better here. And the course is one where when you actually start to look at it, like all these little humps and hollows, and there's some really interesting features that you might not notice just first time. So yeah, highly recommend you actually come down and give this place a go as well. And guys, thank you so much for watching as well. So please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Really helps me grow and really helps me open up new opportunities. So please hit that and the little bell icon while you're down there as well. And please comment below as well. Have you ever done this type of challenge and what do you think of the UDI? Because I know the last version was very popular and I imagine this is going to be the same. So guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.